I'm Helen Avery with the Green Finance Institute. We host the TNFD Secretariat and convene the UK National Consultation Group. So this session is really designed just to provide information to the water sector in the UK and is what we would call an introductory session. So it will be quite high level. We're not going to be going into a lot of technical detail today, but do hope to have um, a second follow up uh, webinar or event or even closed door roundtable where we can start to drill into some of the challenges and details later on. And I am going to be joined later by Andy Brown, Head of Sustainability at Anglian Water, and Dan Ulanowski, Sustainability Manager at the Pennant Group, and Lucy Wright, a Sustainability Graduate at Southwest Water, who are going to share about their experience with the TN TNFD so far um, uh, and the lessons learned. Uh, and that will be followed by a short time for Q&A if you have questions. I expect we might be here for about 45 minutes. So our aim with the session is really, um, as I said, just to start to engage uh, the water sector around TNFD and also scope out what it is what, in terms of support that you need in order to start engaging more and start testing the framework with the view to ultimately adopting it. So there are about seven months left for you to feed into the framework as it develops. So there is still plenty of time to be able to offer that feedback. So you can ensure as the design develops um, that it matches uh, you know, your own um, expectations for, for the framework. Um, we do anticipate and hope that TNFD will follow the route of TCFD towards becoming mandatory down the line. So it's quite early for us to talk and our guests today very kindly offered to join us just at the start of their journey to help you if, as you're contemplating beginning. So to help us gauge the support that you need, we have a, a survey that we're posting in the chat. We'd love for you to fill in, not now, but at your leisure. Um, it's only five minutes um, and it will just sort of ask you what you'd like from us as the National Consultation Group. Uh, but before we invite Andy, Dan and Lucy to join us, however, we wanted to give you some background on the TNFD and the framework development so far. Um, and I'm thrilled to say that Andrew Mitchell is joining us to say a few words before I walk through a short presentation on the framework. And um, Andrew, if you don't know him, is the co-founder of the TNFD and the vice chair heading up the stewardship group. Um, and I always say this, that while he refers to himself as the co-founder, I can say that there would not be a TNFD without Andrew Mitchell. And so we're so grateful he's here to share a few words of inspiration on his way through London as he heads off to Montreal to COP15. So over to you, Andrew. Uh, well, Helen, thank you very much. Uh, I am delighted to be here, a very kind words. Um, TNFD is, you know, it's a global effort. So we're, uh, this is, this is uh, something which has really taken off in the last uh, few uh, years uh, since we really started pushing it for it in 2019. Uh, of course, it's a cousin to the TCFD, and some of you may be working on your climate reporting using the TCFD framework, which of course will become mandatory from 2025 for companies and financial institutions in the UK. Uh, and uh, so what we tried to do is, was think that, you know, what we really need is a, a twin, because the limitation of TCFD is it really only deals with climate and therefore carbon and doesn't deal with uh, many of the other things. And one which will be particularly important to you uh, is plastics in the ocean, the origin of which, uh, as I'm sure you know, uh, uh, two thirds, uh, sort of two thirds of the, of the microplastics in the ocean come from just two sources. And uh, one of those is washing machines and the clothes we wash, which then go through the water that you supply into the rivers of the UK and out into the ocean. So microfibers, the other, really big uh, source of microfibers is car tires that we all drive around on our motorways, which again ends up in the water supply and disappears out into the ocean. So um, we're intimately connected nationally, but with global problems. And uh, the TCFD has nothing to say about those problems. So that's why we thought that it would be good to have a TNFD. Now for you, I know it's a headache. You're all doing a lot of work uh, trying to report and disclose on and there's too many of them and you haven't got the capacity and so on. But unfortunately, uh, the planet doesn't listen to that kind of moaning because it's really under pressure. And uh, we're stuffing up our atmosphere and we're stuffing up our landscapes and oceans as well. And that's going to turn around and bite us in the bum because 44 trillion of the girls global economy depends on services from nature. If you believe the uh, work that's been done and published by the World Economic Forum, this is really, really big. 
as big as climate and COVID-19 is a very good example of unrecognized nature related risk that comes out of nowhere and turns all our lives upside down. Uh, and it's caused by uh, the degradation of nature and zoonotic transfers uh, from the animal kingdom to humans. And so these kinds of, that's what we mean about nature related risks. So don't think about bees and butterflies, start thinking about infrastructure that's keeping the earth safe. And as water companies, you know all about that kind of infrastructure, big floodplains, big river systems that are supplying the water you need uh, to, to the human population in the UK. So what we did with TNFD is that we've got a task force of some 40 financial and corporate institutions around the world, all the big four, uh, like PwC and EY and the rest are all in, uh, some big data providers like S&P, Global, uh, all working together. We've got 130 pilots going on around the world. Uh, the TNFD Forum is now over 800 institutions strong. And I would urge you, if you, if you want to get started on this, then do consider joining the forum. You can do that on the TNFD website. And that's a way to find out more before the market does about what's going on and put in your own ideas as well. We're releasing the framework every few months and the third version of the framework uh, just came out uh, three months ago, uh, sorry, a, a few weeks ago in November, and the next one will be out in March, and the final uh, version will be out in September next year. Uh, we're also working with tremendous knowledge providers from around the world to bring us the best science as we work out how to measure our dependency and impact on nature. And of course, COP15 is going to be having a lot of uh, events about this in the TNFD for different sectors, uh, all about data. Because I think what you'll be interested in is what kind of data can we use? So you know, it's difficult, it's not like the TCFD. I mean, we don't have a currency for nature like a ton of carbon. We don't have a target uh, like 1.5 degrees. Uh, it's more complicated. And there are differences between the TCFD and the TNFD. Uh, the TCFD mainly looked at the impact on enterprise value how it would affect your companies and the portfolios uh, of the things that you invest and lend to, as it were. Um, whereas with the TNFD, we're looking inside out as well. So we're looking at not only impact on enterprise value or the risk to it, but impact on nature as well. And that's part of the reporting regime. What you decide to report and disclose is up to you because it's voluntary at this stage. But as, uh, as Helen said at the beginning, it's likely to become mandatory, uh, I suspect, in the future. And indeed, there's some hundred businesses that are responsible for trillions of dollars at COP this week calling for mandatory disclosure on nature. So the world isn't going to stay the same. Whether we like it or not, we're going to have to do this. And the time to get ready is now. And I urge you to have a look at the TNFD because it's a wonderful guide through this maze of how you move from climate to nature. Thank you very much for joining. I look forward to hearing what both Anglia and Southern have got to say about all this in a moment. Thank you so much, Andrew, and for always being Hi. so inspiring. Um, so uh, I'm just going to um, share some slides. We're going to do a bit of a canter through uh, the framework so far, just so you have that information. I'm good. We'll share these slides back with those attending and those who registered. So um, I don't want to linger too much on them because I think it's always almost more helpful to hear from those who are actually implementing it in your sector. So I'm just going to share my screen, bear with me. Okay, I think that's the wrong button here. Was the wrong button. Okay, great. So hopefully you can see this slide. Um, give me a wave if you can't. So I won't linger on this because I think we all should know what the TNFD is at least. It's delivering a risk management and disclosure framework for organizations to uh, report on and disclose their evolving nature related risks. Um, the TNFD is not developing a new standard. I think sometimes that does get confused with people who don't quite understand what it is, but it is actually integrating current and existing standards, metrics and data into the framework. And um, also as, um, as I'm sure we'll get into, it has really sought to align with the TCFD. So the disclosure metrics do align with the TCFD 
So uh, it should be more familiar and more easy to, to take up. And um, was launched in 2021, as Andrew mentioned, we've, we're now on version three of the release, and I'll talk about those in a minute. There are over 800 forum members globally, and we have over 100 of those being from the UK. They are majority financial institutions. The financial institution sector has really taken uh, with TNFD, but we've actually had uh, less success coming out of UK corporates, um, which I think is interesting. Um, and there is a nature related data catalyst that's there to support because obviously data is key um, uh, with over 100 nature related data providers. Um, as Andrew mentioned, we are on the third release right now uh, that came out on November the 4th and you have until the uh, middle of February to comment and I'll talk to you about how you can do that in a moment. And um, the final version will be out in March and there'll be a 60 day formal consultation period period then um, and then the launch date is expected in September 2023 so it's coming <laughs> big year next year I thought I'd just give you really high level updates of what each of the releases has come up with so this is actually um, an update from version three but it lays out the leap process which is what version one came came out with um, and that is the um, assessment metrics so it's called leap uh, it asks businesses to first locate where their business footprint is and understand the context of nature around that business uh, business footprint. And then the E is for evaluate. You would assess what the exposure is to nature-related dependencies and impacts. Um, sorry, evaluate. Um, and then you would assess what the material risk is of those dependencies and impacts. And then P is to be prepared to um, react to that performance measure and then disclose, disclose, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm in trouble speaking today, disclose what it is that you've found. Um, in the version three, there was added the scoping of the assessment that comes before LEAP. So as we sort of joke internally, that it's actually the sleep process, <laughs> but it's not very, not very catchy to say that. Um, so that was version one. Version two went into a bit more detail about um, what kind of sectors would be priority sectors. Um, uh, within infrastructure, water utilities are named um, as a subsector of the priority sectors, and also a discussion of the realms and the biomes, just to sort of get that language uh, into our vocabulary. It's not something we used to talk about in the corporate world, realms and biomes. So this lovely picture on the right is actually a list of all uh, the biomes uh, and the realms that TNFD offers advice on. These are laid out really clearly in a beautiful like periodic table in version two that is online. Um, the link will be to the TNFT website is in the chat. Uh, there's so much information there. I do recommend that you go and have a look at it if you haven't already. And then version three had a lot of updates. Um, some have highlighted here, there were three new draft disclosures. So just adding to that dis the disclosure metrics um, and sort of showing where it aligns with TCFD and where it might be a little bit different. Um, the additions to the LEAP approach and a bit of streamlining. streamlining. <laughs> um, there was some guidance on the science-based targets for nature. Um, and, uh, and then uh, illustrative risk and opportunity uh, assessment metrics. Um, and then a tools catalog um, that was uh, on an online platform and an update again on the sector and biome guidance. And then finally, a discussion paper on the proposed approach to scenario analysis. And a lot of appendices in the latest version. And I really, again, recommend that you go and have a look at it um, if you can. Okay. Sorry, I am losing my, there we go. So how do you test the framework? Um, you can test it independently. So you would just go away and test it out and report back. And we'll talk about that in a moment. You can test it through piloting program partners. The WBCSD is sort of in charge of pulling some of those together for the water sector. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can let me know and see if there are any sort of spaces available um, to work with them. There's a bit of handholding that goes on with the WBCSD. Uh, and then there's Emerging Markets Focus Fund, which um, uh, probably isn't relevant to us here right now. Um, if you're independently testing the framework, you can do so on the portal. So there is very easy interactive site on the TNFD where it can walk you through the version that you're working on and how you would report back on it and how you can comment. You can share your comments. Um, what do you test? You'd be testing out the leak process. Does it work for you? Uh, what are your challenges with it? Where are the data gaps? Be looking at the illustrative metrics that was put forward and some of the draft disclosure recommendations. 
Um, uh, as I mentioned, it's really vital that we get your feedback because then you have become sort of co-creator of TNFD. So it will make it easier for you in the long run when you do start using the framework to disclose. Uh, finally, just what is the National Consultation Group? We're, we're not really a group, we're effectively like a mailing list and we're here as a hub to uh, offer you support. So we're um, gonna be preparing FAQs for each sector. Uh, as you go along um, the journey towards uh, test through testing the TNFD, we offer webinars like we have now, and hopefully we'll offer more sort of closed door roundtables where we can get peers together to really hash out some of the challenges and capture your feedback that we can also then feed back into the TNFD. Um, and you can join the National Consultation Group by joining the TNFD forum, um, or you can just email me and I'll send you all that information. But there is a lot more information on our website, Green Finance Institute co.uk forward slash GFI Hive. There's a TNFD section there that will tell you how you sign up to the forum. Um, you can sign up to our newsletter. If you signed up to this webinar, you're automatically in the monthly newsletter. You can easily opt out if you don't want it, but it will tell you about all the different webinars that are happening and how you might be involved in any updates from the TNFD. So just finally, before um, we uh, have our guests share how they're, how they're doing with the TNFD, you can... Um, engage with the framework in many different ways. Um, a lot of sectors, particularly the financial sector, are having their own peer-to-peer -peer, uh, groups where they're discussing the challenges they're having uh, and some how they're working through those challenges in sort of individual TNFD discussions. You can join the TNFD forum. Um, of course, you can join the UK National Consultation Group. You can review and comment on the beta framework through that portal. You can test and pilot the framework. You can work with a pilot partner. And you can also become a member when rounds open up. There was recently an, an extra uh, group opened up where there are gaps. Um, there are 40 now 40 members of the task force. I'm not sure if they will be opening it up between now and the rest of um, the time of the uh, preparation before launch. Um, but certainly you feel free to email me at any time and we'll come back to you with any information that you need. So that's it for me. We will share the slides, as I say. Um, and uh, in the chat, we'll put some of the links. Again, we'd love your feedback on the survey if you missed that earlier, just so we can understand from the consultation group, what is it that you need to more fully engage with uh, the TNFD? Just going to escape out of this presentation. Um, so now I'd just love to welcome Andy and Dan and Lucy uh, to join us. Um, so thank you so much for coming. Uh, and sharing your wisdom today and sharing the learnings you have. And, and just to sort of frame up, you know, we recognize that both your firms are, are really early on this TNFD journey and in understanding the development of the framework and how, how it's gonna work for your company. So just a, a big thank you for being um, essentially sort of the, the guinea pigs and pioneers for us today. <laughs> um, so Dan and Lucy, I know you have a short presentation that you wanted to share about your thinking around TNFD. So I'd love you um, to sort of invite you to go first, if that's okay. Thank you, Helen. Uh, afternoon, everyone. Um, good to be here. Dan Olenowski, I'm Sustainability Manager with Penon Group, who most of you will be aware of the parent company of Southwest Water and now also Bristol Water, who we acquired last year. Uh, next slide, please, Amy. So I'm joined today by uh, Lucy Wright, um, who's graduate sustainability um, uh, uh, colleague uh, with, working with us at the moment. And, and in fact, I don't want to steal Lucy's thunder. She's done a lot of the uh, research and, and work on our engagement with TCFD to date. So just to summarize, I mean, first of all, why T TNFD? Um, we anticipate, much as Andrew set out, that uh, it will become a, a mandatory um, d a disclosure in due course, much as T TCFD became so for us this, this year. Um, so, you know, we're, we're keen to kind of get ahead of that becoming a, a, a compliance piece, but also take advantage of the fact that it does provide a helpful framework framework for assessing nature in the round and thinking about how we can better assess and embed nature in our decision making throughout, throughout our business. Um, 
It is but one, however, of a number of uh, ever emerging requirements in, in this uh, landscape of um, what, what we consider as ESG disclosures and, and reporting, some of which, as we know, are, are currently um, mandated, others are, are still voluntary. So we're really keen to kind of see uh, seek opportunities for, for aligning our reporting and disclosure to fulfill each of those um, emerging requirements on, on nature disclosure. Um, as, as Helen said, uh, uh, it, it's early days, um, you know, we really started engaging with the, the disclosure uh, this, this summer, uh, the, 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 the draft framework, and um, as I said, my colleague Lucy is working, working with, with the framework and working closely with our natural resources team to um, begin that engagement process. Um, I'm going to pass over to Lucy now, who's going to just describe a bit more around our current nature related reporting and, and, and plans and initial thoughts on on where we feel we're at in terms of kind of readiness for TCFD, uh, sorry, TNFD reporting in due course. And then we'll touch on some of the challenges as, as we currently see them, um, given our, our early, early stage engagement. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next slide, please. Um, it's a busy slide, this. It has a lot of documents on there. Um, that shows the range of publications that were um, drawing a lot of our uh, metrics from and are having to align. So um, our interface with nature is happening in various pockets across the business and um, we're trying to um, get an overview of that to then streamline how we apply TNFD. So there are more specific documents on there such as our biodiversity strategy for winter delivery and broader documents that nature also features in, such as our net zero plan, environmental plan, and um, plan for healthier rivers and so on. Um, and also things that we've published on, on our website, environmental dashboard. In the past, we've undertaken um, natural capital assessments of our stocks, flows, ecosystem services. So there's a map there with a graph showing the outcome of one of those assessments uh, that was undertaken about two, two and a half years ago. And so we've been building on that in the time since. Um, and our work has developed to um, start mapping some of our, our assets already. So there's also a picture of an AI dashboard that our natural resources team is using um, that begins the process of, of trying to rank the integrity and importance of those different habitats. So already we're starting to see a matchup of the language that the TNFD is wanting us to adopt in what we are already doing and, it, and it's going and picking out um, the indicators from, from what already exists um, amongst our plans and amongst um, our operational teams as well. Um, our nature related teams and roles are expanding as such, we're recruiting in that area. Um, and also our partnerships are expanding. So it seems really timely to be drawing all this together um, and, and using it as a catalyst. Uh, it's the way that, way that we see it here at Penn and Southwest Water. Next slide, please. This is also a busy slide in that we've taken the disclosure guidance on the left-hand side of the screen um, that was published um, in version three of the framework. And we've applied an initial RAG assessment. So you'll notice the red, amber, green dots. Um, so this is quite a high level initial response. What have we already got? What do we already do? What? So we've tried, tried to list some of the evidence that was on the previous screen on the right hand side there. Um, also thinking about our existing metrics and measures, what we already disclosed in our annual reporting. Um, and we've drafted an initial um, response in prose as such to each of the four pillars of the TNFD, um, which very much aligns to how we've disclosed to TCFD over the, the past three years, three, four years. So um, it's really useful to see those documents published that help alignment between the science-based targets for nature and TNFD, um, because it's helping us, us navigate this process of uh, RAG assessment. Um, it's done at a very high level view, as you can see there's lots of areas in need of development. Um, and we're starting initial conversations 
with our key teams, our natural resources teams, to align the concepts uh, behind, behind these different work streams. Next slide, please. So some of our challenges, this is the last slide for us, are listed there. Um, ultimately, our main challenge is ensuring we implement this in the most efficient way, so we're not duplicating or, or rushing into mistakes as such, but doing it as, as authentically as we can to really embed it into decision-making processes for financial planning. And you can see there a couple of the initial uh, questions and, and barriers and challenges we, we've raised amongst our team. So I'll stop there and I'll hand back to you, Helen. Wonderful, thank you. Um, thank you, Lucy. Maybe we'll, we'll dive into those challenges in a bit more detail because they seem very, very helpful actually in, in just feeding back to, to TNFD. Um, so um, Andy, coming to you and then we'll open up to a conversation and hopefully there might be some questions that come in from those um, listening. Um, can you talk to us, uh, we heard there about why it was important to the Penning Group. Um, you know, why is it important to, to Anglin, can you sort of share with us where you are? I know you're in an early stage too, but how are you looking at engaging with the GNFC? Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. And um, uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm going second because I think I'm literally going to repeating exactly what Dan and, and Lucy have been saying. Um, well, I get, you know, why is, it, why is it important to us in terms of um, from, a, from a natural environment perspective you know that is our that is our business that is what we are at the heart of we see ourselves as a natural capital organization so you know from that perspective it, it, it's incredibly important to us but um you know what um what is equally important is as dan was saying you know the plethora of emerging requirements on our business and the people who finance our business in terms of reporting this stuff so I have another series of initials that I could add to the ones that were on, on your slides, Dan and Lucy, you know, the SFDR, uh, the EU, EU taxonomy and, and various other ones that we're kind of wrestling with at, at, at the moment, some of which have um, elements of kind of biodiversity and, and, and nature related disclosures within SFDR, a small amount, EU taxonomy, a much greater amount. Um, and I guess, you know, one of the issues is that just by the nature of our business, just as, as Lucy's slide was showing, we have got a kind of a, a, an equal plethora of ways in which we're already considering and reporting on um, kind, of the, kind of the interface with, with nature. And I think this is what we saw with the TCFD, and we were an early adopter of the TCFD, and we're reporting kind of five or so years ago. And increasingly what we've found is that, you know, how do we get, you know, we have a, I can't remember how, how large our adaptation report was um, the, the last time we published it, certainly over 60 pages long. And then we've got an equally in-depth um, climate kind of net zero strategy as well. So how do we condense those things down into, into the TCFD kind of response? And, and that's been a, an interesting kind of struggle. Um, I think on the nature side, if you think about all of the different reports that, that we produce from the strategic direction statement through the new long term delivery strategies that as an industry we've got to create, um, you know, down into our water resource management plans, the drainage management plans, yep, independent biodiversity strategies that we've, we've got, the WINEP, the business plan and, and lots of other things as well. You know, we, we have got a, a huge amount of information on this. So, um, yeah, I guess from our perspective, we are wanting to kind of engage more fully now to really try and understand, well, OK, what, what does that look like from a, from a water company perspective when we are, you know, we're, we're not, not different to other organisations, but certainly, you know, we, we have a, a kind of perhaps a greater understanding and already quite a big regulatory requirement to report these things. So what will add value and, and how can we deliver something that will that will make a difference rather than be reporting um, a kind of second time round you know, if you, if you know so I don't know whether that answers your question no it, it, or... <laughs> it does and it's actually really helpful because it makes me think that we could we could go back to the TNFD and say um, and under and look through the feedback and see if there are any water companies globally 
that have been feeding back already into uh, the framework that maybe we can pull out some of their learnings because it, as you say I think it's interesting you're in a position where you're already reporting in a lot of this data and now you just got to find out where the gaps are um, if there are gaps indeed and kind of pull it all together so that it aligns with with the TNFD framework. Um, is there anything in particular Andy that you've can share on just some of the lessons learned or even some of the challenges? Well, many, many challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, and like kind of Lucy and Dan's slides were showing, you know, if, if you're looking at the, the kind of leap framework we've been having a look at that and understanding okay where are you know where have we got the information where are our evidence points what are we already reporting where are the gaps um and I, you know the framework is completely understandable i think it's understanding well what does that look like in practice you know what you know what will be if it becomes mandatory what will be an acceptable level of kind of disclosure and reporting and um and how do you do that in a way that can portal through to documents that we already generate and, and, and put forward? Um, I think, you know, and, and reporting is one thing, but it, as I saw on, on, on your slides, um, Dan and Lucy, it's also about how does it change the way you make decisions? And you talk about six capitals and building it into your investment decision making. You know, we've been doing that as well as an organization, and we've now got it built into our, our value framework and we've got a six capitals framework in our investment process um so so some of that kind of thinking is in there but again it's kind of what level of detail do we want to kind of disclose to the outside world that would be meaningful other than the fact that we've got that framework and you know where we're optioneering and we're making decisions nature alongside social capital and, and the other four capitals is being considered kind of equally um so yeah uh, and i guess where we're also using it at the moment is is thinking so we've um you know our, we changed our articles of association a couple of years ago environmental and social prosperity are kind of in the core company dna and we're looking at how we demonstrate that kind of in inside the company and outside of the company so also what we're looking at as we create what that looks like is okay where where are the similarities and how do we align that to some of these frameworks that are that are coming out and um, you know what's going to be meaningful i guess for for stakeholders that are outside thank you and maybe coming back to you lucy and dan you had um, a slide of the challenges i wonder if you might just sort of pick out pick out those and sort of share them with us i wasn't able to write them down quick enough otherwise i'd recite <laughs> them back so i wonder if you could share what you've been finding there yeah no, no problem um, do you want to bring them back up, Amy? So I could just, we can just talk a little bit more to those. Um, but I think, yeah, Andy makes a, a good point, summarises it well. You know, we, we, we do as water companies, we're compelled to, um, because of our obviously obvious and, and existing engagement with nature, um, you know, a whole suite of, of you know, commitments, programs, strategies that, that respond to and, and, and talk about how we need to engage and, and manage um, some of that interface. So, um, yeah, where, where can we um, <clears throat> ensure that this, this becomes a, a helpful addition to that as opposed to a, a burden or indeed in any way conflicting with, with some of that, that work? Um, so terminology is important, um, as, as with all of these things. Um, TNFD proposes a whole suite of uh, some new or, or maybe things that we know but, but haven't quite expressed in those in those terms. So uh, to ensure that we, um, I suppose, the, the framework lands um, successfully, we need to ensure that if um, we're introducing new terms, we can show the uh, analogies, uh, analogies to, to current um, sort of approaches and, and, and terminology within our, our current approaches. Um, all the water, UK water companies are, are working through their business plans for the next um, price review period, um, so-called PR24 business plans. So um, the fact that that's sort of a live process and, and, and TNFD is still sort of iterating um, its it sort of draft guidance is, is, is a bit of a challenge for us um, because some of these things, some of those PR24 plans and programmes will be Kind of largely completed and submitted by the time that TNFD gets gets finalised next year. But obviously, we have a good 
a good steer with the draft guidance as to where that's heading. Um, and as, as we touched on the, uh, the six capitals approach in particular, sort of our approach to assessing and embedding kind of natural capital in, into our decision making is, is obviously quite, quite material here as well. Um, we, we, well, for, for, our, for our company and some of the other uh, UK water companies, um, our sort of interface with the, with the coastal and, and marine environments is, is important and it's an area we want to kind of uh, improve and better understand. And, and our initial sense is that maybe there's the, the, the TNFD is a little, little light, uh, as, as we touched on last week, Helen, in terms of um, its sort of appreciation of that. It's sort of largely focused on those kind of terrestrial examples and case studies. So. Um, we're, we're keen, we're keen to sort of see see more on that, and, and certainly engage and, and disclose around our our uh, interface in, in that area. Um, and as as Lucy said, kind of in summary, th there is so much, and notwithstanding Andrew's point around um, this, this is the you know this is the challenge because of the you know the state of nature. Um, we do need to respond to this, but. Um, it, yeah, it is about trying to come up with the most efficient way that's going to, you know, yield the greatest benefit for, for nature and allow us to kind of quickly embed and, and, and deliver, um, you know, changes that, that will ultimately yield the greatest benefit for nature. So, um, yeah, we, we didn't we didn't highlight here, um, but it's, and it's, it's perhaps an oversight, but, but yeah, on, on the data point, there is so much. There is so much data there. We're, we're sort of working through at the moment how to kind of better organise and, and, and manage our data in the round. Um, and, and nature is, you know, nature and nature related is, is, is kind of but one facet of that. But I think um, TNFD just sort of raise a good, good challenge around how to kind of better um, identify and, and, and indeed highlight the most material kind of uh, data with, with respect to nature. So. Yeah, that's that's kind of where, where we were driving at with some of these these challenges. That's great. Thank, thanks, Dan. Um, I was just going to yeah, jump in. Sorry, I'm just going to chip in on that last point then um, from Dan was also, and we've seen this with some of the other ESG um, uh, returns that we're, we're looking at as well. It's around that kind of boundary setting as well as in terms of what's what's material and um, you know the 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 nature of our industry is is such that you know we can have very direct both a positive and it was really you know it is good within the framework to see positive businesses being able to positively impact on nature i mean that is something that gets missed and as some you know originally an ecologist and spent the formative years within anglian doing purely that just creating new habitats reintroducing species doing good positive you know reconstructive stuff that tends to get missed a lot the assumption is that businesses just by their very nature cause damage um, so the, the boundaries around the kind of the, the sites that the biodiversity we own, you know, the, in the areas directly kind of under our operation, you know, that's that's one boundary. Then there's the, the the kind of potential implications, both kind of from our abstractions, but also our discharges down into ecosystems and, and you know, how far into that ecosystem, you know, in, in responding to the SFDR original kind of format we were saying well every discharge will hit a key biodiversity area at some point that just is the nature but uh, you know do you really want our entire you know um permit kind of um disclosure because that's in that's in another form in another location where you can access that if you really need to and then as, as andrew was kind of saying in, in the introduction you know some of the other broader things around plastics and around other kind of um, issues where we are a conduit for impacts to nature how do we deal with those as well so yeah I think you know where I am in my mind kind of coming into this and preparing for this conversation today was do, do we as a sector actually need to come together and start to have an agreement on okay what is our sectoral response can we create some some agreement in terms of the of the way we think we ought to be responding and and, and the boundaries we ought to be setting and get that into the, the conversation over the next six months. I think that's a fair shout. And, and again, there is a clear parallel here to the discussions, albeit much more mature around, around climate and, and carbon. 
and uh, the scoping and, and, and boundary setting therein, albeit that's uh, an on ongoing one. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's a sensible suggestion. Um, That'd be great. And if we can help in any way, sort of capture that feedback and feedback it formally into the TNFG, of course we can um, and would love to. Um, uh, I'm not seeing any questions, so there is a comment that uh, of uh, Keith. Keith, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your last name because I will butcher it. So, but just agreeing with you, Andy, um, uh, in your comment about needing to avoid um, manage duplication, especially when it comes to uh, regulation. Um, there were a couple of people you know, just in that poll who seemed quite a little bit further on, even uh, in working with the TNFD. If you're uh, bold, you can <laughs> just type in into the chat or please do, you've got a couple of minutes to ask a couple of questions. Um, otherwise, you know, I say we're really keen to sort of understand what is helpful. There are, you know, tr trade organisations that, that support the water sector. So um, if we can support them in supporting you uh, in getting together um, and sort of sharing some of the feedback that you want to give to the framework. Um, as I say, we, we, I can't underestimate how important that is uh, in these sort of final months as it's being um, done. And obviously when it comes out in September 23, it won't be the final version because the data is evolving and nature our awareness of an understanding of nature-related risk is understanding um, is evolving all the time. Um, but we have a quiet crowd, so... Uh, <laughs> It was the, the afternoon session, what can I say? Um, and if so, if there aren't, if, I don't know if there's any more comments you wanted to add before before we go, Dan, Lucy or Andy. That was a really helpful discussion in terms of determining we do need a sector response. As they mentioned, of, could there be a Water UK steering group around this? You know, it seems to be an obvious next question. So. Um, thank you, Andy, and thank you everybody for organising this because it's a really good first step towards that. All right. Well, well thank you, Lucy. Um, yeah. So these are the, the designed to just information sessions in the hope that we'll, we can either pull people together or they'll pull themselves together uh, and start to discuss it. But if there's anything we can do, you have my email, everyone, and we'll put it up at the holding slide. We will share back slides um, afterwards, um, and. Uh, Someone shared they work at Seven Trent. Is there a way to form a, a water industry working group? <laughs> um, I see him uh, from Georgina Key at Seven Trent. Yeah, um, yeah, she must have come in through Vix. So, uh, so that, Vic's that, yeah, there seems to be again. Helen, you, uh, GFI should be applauded for stimulating <laughs> perhaps what we should uh, establish as an industry ourselves. I mean, I, I don't have direct kind of representation into Water UK, but colleagues at, at South West do, and I'm sure Andy and Keith and others are similarly plugged in. So, it, yeah, it would seem sensible to, to hook um, Water UK into this and perhaps they could be part of um, that, that proposed next session, Helen. Yeah, great idea. They're already coordinating common positions on lots of different areas. So, this would seem an obvious uh, addition. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. And then, equally, if we can pull together any FAQs to sort of see the kind of data people are working through and what they're using. Um, and sort of short case studies of where people are so far. I think that's always helpful to share around too. So anything we can do to support that, we will. Um, but thank you so much again for coming on and geeing up, geeing up the interest. Uh, <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. And many thanks to you as well, Andrew. I don't know if you're still there, but thanks for coming on as always and, um, uh, and inspiring us all through your work with the TNFD. So that is it from us. I say you have um, as a survey here. We'd love to hear from you if there's something we can help. But it sounds like we might have even nailed that in this session. Um, and then you have all the links and my email. Uh, hopefully we'll come up here. And um, that is it from us. And just uh, hope you have all a lovely afternoon. Thanks for joining us today, all of you. <laughs>